Many, 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 many wrestling fans, wrestling sites have been blasting WWE and specifically Raw in recent weeks for just how bad it's been, how bad it has gotten. And I can attest, after watching this past Monday's Raw, that it's pretty bad. No great surprise to me. I'm like, when was the last time it was really, truly good? But that said, it's whole other level bad. Worst it's ever been? I don't know. That seems a little bit reactionary, a little bit in the moment, uh, recency bias, but pretty bad nonetheless. Like you really, 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 it feels like have to be digging deep, 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 deep to find a whole lot of positive things to say about Monday Night Raw right now. So it most certainly would not surprise most fans that these past two weeks Raws, which have been almost universally panned, crapped on, and dissed, apparently were written by Vince McMahon or in this case, rewritten by Vince McMahon on the day of Raw itself. Sounds about right, doesn't it? It's kind of what we've come to expect from WWE. And now this automatically will be a chance for everybody to say, see, the old man's lost it, he's out of touch, he doesn't know what the hell he's doing, he's never known what the hell he's doing, he doesn't know what he's doing for a long time, and all of this. And, and don't get me wrong, I find it kind of challenging to see how a guy in his mid-70s is going to be able to relate to kids that are 65 plus damn fucking years younger than him. Now that's not saying old people can't write children's books or this or that, but golly, at some point in time, there is a natural, genuine disconnect between Vince McMahon and his reality and the reality of the fan base that he is trying to produce product for. A significant one. Not to mention other demographics that you would hope to be able to peel in, especially the 18 to 39 male demographic, which is what advertisers love the most. But as much as everybody's talking about him being out of touch and him being over the hill and he's lost it and he doesn't know what he's doing, I think the most troubling element to me about this is what this suggests. Is that Vince McMahon has a crew of writers, a creative team, where they have a creative process, where they present what they feel is a finished product to him, for him only to ultimately go and just basically rip up the script and rewrite the whole damn thing all over again. Is basically what's happening here. That suggests a complete and total lack of leadership. You'll hear about it in sports all the time. You can talk about the quarterback, you can talk about the head coach, and you can even talk about the general manager. But the truly great organizations, it starts with the leadership at the top. It's why the Patriots do so well, because Robert Kraft is a quality owner. And most importantly, gets the hell out of the way of the people that he needs to get the hell out of the way of, in this case, Brady and Belichick. And then on the flip side, while this other guy has made a lot of money and is a big star in terms of NFL owners, Jerry Jones, from a football standpoint, over the past two plus decades, has largely been a shitty owner because he's not a great leader. You can manage and not lead. You can lead and other people manage themselves. That's a key difference. And what Vince McMahon is doing now is the epitome of micromanaging, the epitome of lacking leadership. One of the key things you could do in leadership, especially when you're managing people, which ultimately Vince McMahon is managing people, is you bring people in to do stuff that you shouldn't have to do. The only thing that Vince McMahon should be doing in his role at this stage of his career, at this stage of his life, are those things that only he can do. If it is something that somebody else can do, then you let them do it. This is basic corporate structure 101. 
And for a company that has prided itself on being publicly traded on the stock market for almost 20 years and acts and believes itself to be a corporation because they ultimately are a big corporation worth a couple of billion dollars on the stock market, the fact that they go so against basic fundamental corporate structures is just absolutely mind-blowing to me. You've got Vince McMahon, the CEO, the chairman of the board, the HNIC of all that you see when it comes to WWE, the largest shareholder by a mile and all these other things. He's making the decisions that the lowest level grunts would be making. That's not leadership. Leadership is delegating responsibilities and getting them to do it at a similar level of what you could do. Delegating and teaching them how to do things to get more out of them to make them better. What Vince is doing is what bad leaders do, bad even managers do. And that is the whole thing of everybody sucks, nobody knows what they're doing, and I'm just going to take it on and do it myself. And in the process, what ultimately happens? The people within the organization that report underneath him feel disenfranchised, they lack involvement, they lack buy-in and commitment to what the company is doing, what the vision is, and also the person now that has taken on all this unnecessary additional responsibility is dropping the ball themselves and executing horribly. This is a complete and total lack of leadership from a guy running a company, more specifically, since he's CEO and chairman of the board, he's running a stock, and that is a big difference. It's a big, big difference. Like, I look at the company that I work for outside of YouTube. You've got a CEO who founded the company. So similar to WWE, where Vince McMahon is part of the founding family. There's kind of a cult of personality around that guy. And sometimes people are afraid to say what is really true about the guy because you're taught this kind of propaganda about this and what this guy is about and what all he's meant and all this other crap. You have all of that. But what you also have is a guy that is managing a stock. He's not managing a company. But at the same point in time, he's worried about all the nuts and bolts daily, ins and outs at every level of the organization. That's not effective. I can't imagine in my company, the CEO who founded the company, being worried about the decisions at the lowest levels. That's not his job. You put people in place, that put people in place, that put people in place, that put people in place on down the line in the order to make those types of decisions. And typically, you prioritize and you say, this type of decision has this level of importance that we've assigned to it, and therefore it must be approved at this level. Vince is just basically saying, we're going to skip all of that crap, and every single decision has to go through me. That's incredibly worrisome, incredibly troublesome, because it speaks to the heart of the matter. That is that Vince is a terrible people leader, and frankly, at this stage, when you look past the inflated, manipulated profit numbers of the WWE, it's at, it suggests a general lack of sound business mind in lack of sound organizational leadership. What is the purpose of having a creative team if you were just going to undercut them every chance you get? And for all the people that always want to sit there and just attack the creative team, it really doesn't matter because they can present the best ideas in the world, even though we know what they're not. But let's humor them and say they are. If this guy doesn't like them, then that's all that matters. Then why the hell would they care at this point? Literally, no matter what they could put up there, they could draw a picture of a dog taking a shit, just the same as they wrote out a three-hour show, and Vince is still going to rewrite the mother effing thing in any damn ways. Like, this is absurd. And not only that, thinking about it from a leadership standpoint, one of the most important things you could do from a leadership standpoint is take responsibility and accountability to the point where sometimes, as a leader, you deflect that responsibility and accountability off of others and you put it solely on yourself. But Vince never takes accountability for any fucking thing that he does wrong. Last week's show, 
was the lowest watched of all time or whatever the hell it was. And this week's show was basically the lowest watched of all time. The one common theme here is what? It's Vince McMahon wrote both the fucking shows. If I'm sitting there as an investor and I'm looking at it, I'm saying, so the guy that's been in charge for almost 40 years now is the one in charge of writing the shows. He's taking what anybody else does, wipes his ass with it, and does it himself. And in the last two weeks, he's produced two of the least watched episodes of Monday Night Raw in their 25-year plus fucking history. And all the while, You've got all these other people in the organization. What the hell are they supposed to do? Why the hell do you even freaking have them at this point? And again, for these people that live in this fantasy world, that as soon as Vince would go away, Hunter and Steph or Hunter would come in and automatically shit would be better. No, the fuck it wouldn't. Because when it comes to calling the biggest shots, for the biggest show, Vince has not delegated. He does not delegate. He never delegates. He never will delegate until he's RIP dead and fucking buried. So as a result, these guys are going to get in position talking about preparing them yet, preparing them for shit when everything ultimately has to funnel through the big guy. The way it should work is people like Hunter and Stephanie and Shane or whoever should be calling the shots for the programming, for the product, and then they ultimately report to the founder, Vince, with the results. That's how basic corporate structure works. Basic corporate infrastructure works. Decision-making, structuring, you different levels of process depending on the level of organization and its depth and its scope. But what you shouldn't be having is your CEO and the chairman of the board that intimately involved in the day-to-day -day operations and nuts and bolts of everything. Because it calls into question his ability to delegate. It calls into question his ability to effectively prioritize from a business standpoint. It calls into question his judgment. It calls into question a lot of damn things. And again, if you're an investor and you're looking at this, and you're saying, my God, these are two of the least watched shows of all time. And the guy running the damn company is the one that wrote both of them. You know, you can sit there and hang on to the fascination of they got big money from USA Network to extend Raw for several more years. They got big money from Fox in order to run on prime time on broadcast television over the next few years. That's all fine and good. But if things continue to go down the path they are, and we keep talking about it because they keep going down this path and it only gets worse, never better, just worse. There's going to be a jump off point here and it's going to be damn near too freaking late. And you can hang on to these fantasies of Hunter and Steph or just Hunter, whatever the hell you want to. It's not going to make a damn bit of difference because all they're going to do is they're going to get into the position of Vince McMahon and they're going to do the same damn thing because they think that's how an organization is supposed to be run. Vince's lack of leadership is toxic poison to that product, to his organization, to the company as a whole. We talk about any number of different things, but just the mere fact that this guy thinks it is worth his time to starting in the afternoon on Monday, rewrite all of Raw for two consecutive weeks. To me, shows just how concerned we should be about the long-term health and viability of the WWE under Vince McMahon's leadership. Why? Because there's no leadership ability being shown. <laughs>